A man who was sexually assaulted as a 14-year-old boy by two former BBC radio presenters tells us he's speaking out to help other victims come forward. Husband and wife Tony and Julie Wadsworth were found guilty of encouraging six boys between the ages of 11 and 15 to take part in sexual activity in the 1990s. The couple presented on both BBC Radio WM and BBC Radio Leicester. Now then, my and your next guest has arrived, Julie. She's seated opposite to me, and she's the first female county commissioner for Leicestershire Scouts. Good Can morning. I first apologise for my missus? Why? That's all right. She was a very naughty no, cub. I was, I was young. She was thrown out. Well, one of their victims has waived his right to anonymity to talk to us this morning. And the nature of some of what he describes is un uncomfortable and may be upsetting. Certainly, if you have young children in the room, you might not want them to listen. Darren Cunningham was 14 when the abuse began. I googled the names of the people that I'd seen on the TV and it, I'd seen the pictures and it was them, the same couple. So I went home and I told my wife that they had been on the news and I said, I don't know if to phone the police. I said, because they've been charged with offences in 1996. But what happened to us was in 1992. And I was thinking, what happened in them four years between? Did they stop or? So for a couple of days, I toured with the idea of telling the police because I was getting married in a month's time. And my wife had said, do you really want to bring this up four weeks before the wedding? And so I'll give it two or three days and then I decided to phone the police. I dialed 101 and spoke to someone on the phone and they got the CID officer in charge of the case to ring me back. He asked me to come in for an interview and I went in and gave a statement to what happened to us then. And you, I think, had at the forefront of your mind not only what happened to you but the fact that you have an 11-year-old stepson. Yeah, it was... They said that the youngest victim was 11 and I looked at my stepson, who's 11, he's 11 soon, mm. and uh, I thought, well, they're tiny. When it happened to us, we was 14, and although it was still really bad, we thought that we was in control. That's what grooming does, doesn't it? It gives you the thought that you're in control. Mm. And so, can I ask, Darren, what did happen to you in the 90s? Well, what happened was we was playing in the park as kids, and we, a, a friend came down and said, there's a lady and a man coming down here, and the lady's got no underwear on. We said, how do you know? And he, he says, she's got this skirt on with a split up the side. So we went and had a look, the boys that I was with. And there she was walking down the road with a leg coming out of this split in a, in a skirt. And because it was so old, you could see she didn't have a nickel on. And uh, she, she looked back at us and she was giggling and they liked the fact that we was having a look. And they went into the trees in the park. It was a busy park. And uh, we went and had a look through the gaps in the bushes. And they beckoned us in to come closer and told us to come in. And while I was in the bushes, they, they were performing sex acts on each other. A skirt was lifted open, the top was undone. She'd undone his trousers and took his penis out of her, his trousers. And basically, people were walking by with their dogs. And because it was a busy park, it was a Saturday morning, midday. And uh, she says, Is there anywhere more private? So, being a group of boys knowing the area, we said, There's a wood, a golf course. Up up the road, not far away. So we walked up the woods with him. I took my bike home, we walked up the woods. And uh, they went in the trees again and they had full sex in the woods in front of us. And we, we stood there just watching, shocked, surprised, just what, 14 year old boys. We, we hadn't seen anything then. It weren't the times of the internet. I mean, I think most 14 year olds now have seen something with the internet, but we hadn't at that time, there was no internet. And uh, we watched them and they invited us to come back next week to see them again. So we went back the week after, watched them again. And uh, at the end of that time, she says, if you come back next week, you can have a play. So we went, all this time, they, they was inviting us. So we, we thought we was in control of it. We, we didn't know any better. Mm -hmm. The week after we went back, uh, my, a, a boy I was with, he went in first in the bushes with Julie and Tony and I waited at the footpath and uh, he'd been gone a few minutes. He came back and he says, uh, he's got a camera, I've not, her husband's got a camera. So I went in and he says she wants you to go in, so I went in and uh, she was just sat there on a coat, stockings, suspenders, no underwear, shoes on and uh, she told me to sit down next to her. So I sat down next to her and I says, I'm not doing anything, he's got a camera. So she told her husband to take a walk 
and he walked off with, into the woods with a camera. And basically she just undone my trousers, took total control, uh, masturbated me, told me to touch her, and just basically instructed me what to do. And in court, the, the, their defence, the couple's defence, was that you were older than you were, yeah. and that also she, in particular, was a victim of poisonous and untrue allegations. Yeah. I, the, when I first went into court, I was in the dock for an hour and a half. They questioned me for a long time. They, uh, they went over my story lots of times, and they said, first of all, they said that I'd met, I'd met a couple, but it wasn't them. Then they said it, I hadn't met anybody and that I was lying. And then they said I had met them, but I was older. Mm. And it just changed quite a lot through the, through the old hour and a half I was in there. But when she went into court herself, she admitted to touching me, but said that I was older. Mm. But uh, I knew for a fact how old I was because there was significant things happened at that time. Mm. A friend of mine's mum had died in the period that this happened. So within. We met them on the Saturday, then the following Saturday, the following Thursday, my friend's mum had died. And then the Saturday after that, we went again. And so I knew the exact date. We, I could check when my friend's mum died, so I knew the exact date it happened. I think some of your friends now have said that they wish it, it had happened to them. Yeah, yeah, a lot of, it, it's, get, it's had a lot of uh, mixed reactions, really. Most men think that it was, great and they wish it had happened to them but uh, it, it's not that way and I've got a 14 year old daughter I've got a 13 year old daughter and if a 35 year old man was doing something to them everybody would be up in arms and they'd want them lynched or put away but the same people seem to have a different attitude to men they just seem to think that it, it like I've said in the paper and I think that it's been said a few times that it's like every boy's dream a 14 year old boy's dream and it probably is when you're 14 but you don't realise that it's wrong at 14. You think you're a man or you think you're grown up. And mm. you, teens do, they do think they're grown up way before the time. And it's just, it's just wrong, isn't it? The NSPCC say uh, their behaviour was child sexual abuse. People are much more aware of abuse on children now to what, not that they, they weren't aware, but I just don't think it was, it's taken in the same light. And, and now the police are very good at they know all the, all the signs of abuse and they're very helpful if, when I went to speak to them, they were brilliant with me. Yeah. You were, I mean, you were groomed effectively. Uh, you may not have realised it, but that's what happened. Yeah, well, uh, I always, always believed from that day, we've never really spoke about it much. I spoke to my wife about it when I first met her. I told a group of boys, probably about 2007, something like that, we was talking one day and we was talking about things that had happened when we was younger. Mm. They didn't believe me. But I always thought that it was only us, me and the group of friends I was in, that we'd bumped into them by chance, seen that what they was canoodling and having sex in the woods, and we got invited just by chance that that happened. It wasn't until I seen in, that they was charged with the offences in '96, and later heard about all the other accounts that it, it was they were grooming, and it was it was basically an MO for them. I mean, they led us to believe that we showed them the woods where they went. But uh, it turned out that they took other boys to the same place. Mm. So it was just what they were doing and what they were into. They've been jailed for five years for indecently assaulting underage boys. What do you think of that sentence? I think five years is it, it's, it's fair. They, I was just happy that they got sentenced. I, would, I wanted them to get charged so it didn't happen to anyone else. It wouldn't have mattered if they got two years to me, it wouldn't have mattered if they'd got 20. They're, they're at an age now where five years is a, it's a big chunk of their life, 16, 70 years old. So they're gonna feel the punishment and I'm sure people in prison will know who they are and they'll, they'll know so. And how important finally, Darren, has it been for you to waive your right to anonymity, to, to speak up about this? Uh, it's been important. It, it's, I had a couple of messages via Facebook of people that have been abused and hadn't told anybody and now that it's me being on the TV and speaking out has made them come forward, they've got interviews with the police and I think if it gives people the strength to come forward then it's the right thing to do. Thank you very much Darren, thank you so Thanks much you. for talking to us. Thank you.